I want to bring in the producing executive director of Venice Theater, Murray Chase. Murray, uh, first of all, I'm sorry for what you and all the folks there are going through. Tell us what it was like even to experience that and to see, I think you've been at that theater since 1995, am I right? And, and to see what's happened now? That is correct. Um, I received a phone call or a text from a board member about 1.15 that day saying what happened at the theater and then qu quickly followed by, we will find a way. I knew that wasn't good and uh, received a photo a few months later and it showed that damage that you're seeing now. Uh, it was a gut punch. It really was. Uh, fortunately, looking at it, I think perhaps there are portions of uh, the building that we'll be able to to salvage, and we'll start back. A Venice Theater is is not a building. It's it's a uh, it's a community of people, and it's uh, the lifeblood of the of the town. So it is not going to go away. It's just going to be different for a while. That's for sure. How do you even begin to be figure out where to start? What you're going to do next? Well, we, we started with securing the area, and now we'll start the cleanup. We have engineers coming in starting tomorrow to assess the remainder of the building and, and uh, making sure that that's stable and safe. And then we'll get uh, the various professionals on site to start redesigning and getting the, uh, the new structure back up to code and making sure that it uh, follows uh, better hurricane preparedness than the building that was built 100 years ago did. Uh, that was probably the worst part of it is that we had 100 mile an hour plus winds hitting a 100 year old building for more than four hours at a stretch, just relentless. And eventually the old building just couldn't withstand it. What was it like for you during that period? Where were you and what did you see and feel? Well, we were at home and it was uh, it was uh, rather frightening, not nearly uh, as seeing the damage, what it was like for those folks in Fort Myers. That's just absolutely devastating. We had uh, minor damage at home, as did most of the homes on our street, and lots of flooding uh, in the street, and some of the homes flooded, some roofs came off. But uh, fortunately, in our neighborhood that we know of, nobody died. There were no significant injuries, uh, anything like that. We were very fortunate, but it was um, pretty horrendous listening to the 115, 120 mile an hour winds for four or five hours at a stretch. It just didn't let up. We were sitting through Hurricane Charlie in 2004. Hurricane Charlie was a cloudy day compared to what this was. It was, I've never seen anything like it. So now you have to move on. And they say the yes. phrase community, uh, theater community for a reason. Uh, theaters, theater troops, theater organizations are very much a community. What are the conversations like among that community for you? And, and what can you tell us about the way that both the theater community and the larger city is co are coming together. I can tell you that within our theater community, I have we uh, we host an international festival every two years, and we've received comments and emails and texts from people from at least forty countries. From uh, 40, four uh, zero 40, countries, four zero countries. That is wow. correct, and more than forty states. Our friends across the country. And within our own community, I've already received uh, calls from local foundations, from city officials, vowing to do whatever they could do to help us rebuild. That doesn't count the hundreds and hundreds of volunteers and donors that we have already that are already getting in touch with us saying, what do we need to do to help? It's uh, incredibly gratifying uh, to, to know that the community will come together and will help us rebuild. What do you need most right now? What do you tell them when they say, how can we help? Uh, let's wait until we know what the extent is and what we can do. We will need, we will need funds. Uh, insurance would be great, but we will in, need funds to rebuild. And we also, of course, uh, have a 30-member a staff that we have to uh, try to take care of as much as we can because uh, they are the lifeblood of that theater as well. So it's a matter of, of knowing what we're going to need fund-wise, get the uh, analysis done, and, and move forward uh, as quickly as is, and as safely as we possibly can. Um, I have no idea of the time frame, but uh, uh, we're not dead in the water in that we do have another performance space, a smaller one, and we have other buildings that, that, that uh, uh, came out unscathed. But the, this, the building that you're seeing that was destroyed is the main auditorium. 
and that's where most of the people across our community would see shows. So that's uh, that's the the main thing we have to address and to make sure that whatever we do next is going to be stronger, better, and uh, and services the community just as well. Um, so we just hang on with us, stay with us, follow the news, and help when we uh, when we call for it, which will be probably pretty soon. There's no doubt uh, in the history of the theater community that uh, often, for better or for worse, and probably both, uh, challenging times bring on a lot of creativity. And so maybe that will be the case here as well, both in the rebuilding and in what uh, you bring to the community in the months and years to come. Marie Chase, thank you so much for taking the time. We wish you so much luck. Thank you for having me.